Uh, my name is David Burstein, and I am 22. And what is your story, and how are you working to solve today's problems? You know, I'm a proud member of the millennial generation, and I started off thinking about how do we get more young people involved in politics. Uh, so I started 18 and 08, uh, making a film, and then uh, a subsequent organization around it, which is now called Generation 18, to really encourage more young people to vote and get involved in politics. And through that experience, I sort of realized the power of young people, not just in politics, um, but in business and in technology and the way that this generation is really changing the world. And to me, that's an important story that I want to get out there. So uh, I'm writing a book right now that will be out in September of 2011 about the millennial generation and really telling our story uh, because we are quite possibly uh, the greatest generation. We're the biggest generation in history. And there's a lot of power in being young. So I want to communicate that message to everybody. And I want people to understand and appreciate the power of, of our generation. And can you talk about some of the work you did with uh, Generation 18 as well? I think cool. Yeah, I mean, we, we started out as uh, you know a, an organization that was basically just a film, and then it turned into uh, really a national campaign. We ended up registering 25,000 new voters. We held screenings, 1,000 screenings all over the country. We got the film into high schools uh, and college curricula, and we were really trying to get um, the message out on all fronts. And we, I think we were very successful. I mean, 2008 was a historic year for youth voter yeah. participation. Um, and I'd, I'd like to think that we played a, a role in making that possible. What inspired you to, to do this project? And was there like a moment you decided or was it more of a gradual thing like this needs to be done? You know, I was sitting around with my friends actually on the election night in, in 2004. And, you know, I was, we were watching the results come in and we were all very excited. And then... You know, I heard them say on, you know, on, I think it was Brian Williams on NBC saying, you know, well, again, it's another disappointing year for the, for young voters. And I said, well, that has to change. Uh, and it did turn out that that election cycle actually had been quite a good year for young voters. So I also realized that the mess, the, the media message also had to change. So I, I said, you know, if, if young people want to live in a better world than we live in now, we've got to start now. You know, taking taking a part in shaping our own future, and 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 the first step to that is voting. Um, so that's sort of what really inspired me, and I, I started working on it into the film in 2005, getting ready for the 2008. Everybody really was responding to the 2004 election cycle with with thinking about you know so many people who got involved in trying to get greater young voter turnout in 2008. Great. Um. You know, one of the things that this coalition is very focused on is, uh, is being bipartisan and working across a lot of traditional boundaries. Um, with this film, with the work, what are some traditional boundaries you've had to work across? Well, uh, we definitely got to work across the partisan boundaries. I mean, uh, people who I interviewed for the film range from Robert Byrd uh, and Barbara Boxer to Jeb Bush um, and uh, Sam Brownback. Uh, and Chuck Hagel. So we definitely worked it, it, on a partisan level with people from all sides. I mean, on our advisory board, we had uh, a, a, one of George Bush's cousins as well as one of Hillary Clinton's biggest fundraisers. Um, so we definitely worked across those boundaries, but also I think we did some things that um, traditionally people haven't thought of when it comes to young voters. We um, did a program with Elder Hostel at senior centers um, encouraging senior citizens and grandparents to encourage their grandchildren to vote, um, and that was that was something that was really that I, I'm very proud of that we did. Um, we also really yeah, more you know organizations have really like this have really been traditionally focused on you know red, voter registration, which we were, but we were also really focused on a media message uh, and making sure that people understood that young know, people were playing a role um, because to me. It didn't seem like it would do any good if young people voted, but nobody uh, realized that. It's, you know, it's the, if a tree yeah. falls in the forest, then we here. Great. What are some of the uh, most pressing issues facing our young people and some of the challenges that our generation is facing, in, in your view? Well, look, all, all issues are youth issues. Um, you know, every, every major issue that we're talking about right now 
um, is in crisis. So education, we have a crisis that's immediate. Um, it's climate change, we have a crisis that's immediate. The economy, we have a crisis that's immediate. But all of those things, uh, unfortunately, the you know there's not much we can do for the people who are being affected by them this very second because they're going to be complicated problems to solve. Um, but as young people, we should have a vested interest in working on those issues so that you know we can spend some of our lives living in a world where some of those issues are addressed. Um, you know, we want the education crisis to be fixed by the time we have children and who are going through the education system. Then we got to This is crunch time right now. Um, so I think that that is, is sort of the way I like to think about it is, you know, young people are going to be around longer than anybody else. So any issue that affects people right now is going to affect us more than it's going to affect anyone else because we're going to be around for longer. So, but we, we may, and a lot of these things, we can't change the, the shape and destiny, destiny of them at this very moment for today, but we can change the destiny for, for tomorrow now. Great. And in the follow-up, which is actually the last question, which is, what advice do you have for a young person who wants to get more involved in the political process or their community or youth mobilization? What would you tell them? You know, it, 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 to me, the most important thing when you're thinking about getting involved in the political process, people have a, a real tendency to sort of skip over lots of steps and, you know, just, just sort of go to work for a member of Congress or an organization or a nonprofit or to start their own organization. And I would actually say, don't do that, um, or maybe do that. But first think about what, ma what really matters to you and think about what you're really good at. And it may be that you're really good at, you know, at, tech, at, at building Facebook applications. So if that's yeah. what you're really good at, think about what Facebook application you could build that could, you know, play a big role in doing fixing some some challenge we're facing. I think we, we've tend to we've, we've come as a society to de-emphasize the value of small change and the value of making sort of uh, very you know we're really obsessed with talking about leaders and we should talk more about followers and people who are part of the process that make anything that a leader is doing possible. Um, so don't don't try and so I guess what I'm trying to say is don't try and just go for you know, something that's, you know, the biggest possible thing. Think about what you're really good at and think about what you care about and what your skills are and put those together and figure out what you can do.